Right, so before we get on to a coaching exercise, I wanted to um, uh, just to go to go back to something that we talked about right at the start, a real sort of basic thing, which is the, the idea of a, a servo mechanism. Um, just to explain how we would build one of these things. Um, and I mentioned a book called Growing Up With Lucy by Steve Grant, who was a, a pioneer of, of artificial intelligence. Um, and the style of, of programming artificial intelligence, which is we present, uh, if, if, we, if, we, uh, if we build a machine that mimics the way that a human being is built, then does a human being like or does an intelligent behavior emerge from that? And you remember that there was um, some work done where some scientists dissected a worm's brain, 340 neurons. They looked at the connections between neurons and they reproduced those connections in software, put that software into a robot, just turned the robot on just to see what it would do, and the robot exhibited the behaviors of the worm in that it moved towards food and moved away from light which sounds very simple uh, and we could very easily program a little toy robot to do that but we would have to know how to do that in order to pro pro program the steps the approach they took was not knowing how it did it just reproduce how it's built and see if the behavior emerges from the structure of the system and that's exactly what happened um, so I talked about servo mechanisms and the servo mechanism is, is very simple It is a, a comparator and an amplifier. Does everyone know what an amplifier does? Makes things bigger. Yeah, it makes things bigger. It increases the increases a, an electrical signal typically. Um, and if you think of like a hi-fi system, you might have a, a, a sequence of amplifiers going from the source material that might be a record or a CD or something to the final result, which is loudspeakers. So there's a series of amplifiers that put more electricity into the system, but the output looks a lot like the input did, it's just bigger. Does that make sense? So you could plug a CD player directly into a pair of speakers, you could probably just about hear something uh, if you had very sensitive speakers. But you, but you need the amplifier in the middle and there's a pre-amplifier and there's a power amplifier, so there's this chain of amplifiers that get from the original source to, um, to the output that then we can, uh, we can detect, we can interact with. So this comparator is going to compare two inputs and based on the difference between these two inputs it's going to uh, send some sort of signal to the amplifier, the amplifier will then produce some output. So if we want to operate a a motor or uh, a, yeah electrical motor or something like that we'll need some volts coming out of here some electrical current coming out of here which is much higher than what's going in at this end uh, so we might have some very think of think of something that you might want an electrical motor to do if you're building a robot think of something that you want a motor cool, to do cool, keep the robot cool. keep it cool Temperature, yeah. very good so what would one of what would these input sensors be then Hot, uh, so they, they would have to recognize when it's overheating or yeah. too cool so they're going to be temperature sensors yeah. they might be a very so complex uh, temperature sensor like something called a thermoresistor where the resistance changes gradually or it might be something uh, as simple as what's in the thermostat which I said was two strips of metal stuck together one expands more than the other when it warms up and the thing will flick from side to side and it will just be on and off or the thermoresistor will gradually increase its resistance as the temperature goes up or down depending on how it's made uh -uh, so we'll have pick a temperature that we'd like our robot to be at 32 degrees 32 degrees. 32 degrees. See? I just thought that it was quite warm. Is it? I have no idea. I just thought the, the road, the address was 32. 32. Yeah, we'll make it 32. That's okay. It's going to be a hot robot. Well, we, We're all hot people. Well, for example, your computer CPU will run much hotter than that, but it's got heat sinks and it's got cooling fans and it's got all this stuff. It will. The robot on the North Pole, it needs to keep warm. It will, yeah, it will, <laughs> it will survive. So we'll take that. We'll take that for the sake of argument. 
And let's say we've got a little sensor here. Let's, let's say it's a, th a, a thermoresistor. So we know that at 32 degrees, we know what its resistance is going to be because the manu we've got the manufacturer's information sheet for that device. We know exactly at that temperature what its resistance will be. So what we have here is a reference point. So we've got an external sensor, and then the other thing we need is a reference point. What the comparator will do is compare the two. When they're equal, what will it? What will the? What do we want the system to do when it's equal? Just nothing. Want to do nothing. What do we want the system to do when the reference is higher than the sensor temperature? The reference is higher than the sen the external sensor. Yeah, it's do nothing. It will get warmer by itself getting warm because it's doing stuff. And if the reference point is lower than the sensor, what do we want it to do? Yeah, turn the fan on. So let's say we've got an output here and that connects to a little cooling fan. Very simple. So we can very, very easily make a very simple electrical circuit that will compare two resistances and activate or send a, a, an output if those are not different or, or one is bigger than the other. Or we can do it a very complicated way with a little processor, a little microprocessor, and we can, you know, do clever things. Or we can build a very, very, very simple, very basic circuit to do this. Uh, in fact, to measure two, to compare two resistances, did anybody do O level physics? Mm -hmm. what, do, what device do we use to measure two resistances? A Wheatstone bridge invented back in the 19th century, I think, or possibly even the possibly even the 18th century. A Wheatstone bridge is called, and it's you, you use it to, to measure resistances, like um, by comparing two resistances. And it's uh, uh, that's it. No, nor stone, confusingly. <laughs> but it's a bridge, yeah. So it's the way you connect resistors up. If you know one, then you can deduce what the other is by me measuring the, the voltage. So I hope engineers never die because we're dead. Well, we can take a circuit that was that was invented a couple of hundred years ago, and we can use it to build a very very simple system to activate the fan when the temperature goes above a certain point. It's very simple. And that is a servo mechanism. Um, and a servo mechanism needs a loop. It must have a feedback loop, otherwise it doesn't know when it's reached its target. So where is the feedback? If we've got a wire, a series of wires going to the fan, where is the feedback coming? So we've got a series of wires that go from the temperature sensor all the way through to the fan. But there's another part of the feedback loop that we're missing here that we, isn't in the diagram. Because we've drawn an electrical diagram, but we're missing part of the <coughs> feedback loop. Where is that feedback loop? The external air. It's in the air. The fan draws in air from the outside. Assuming that that air is cooler than this, the system will get cooler, and the temperature sensor will detect that drop in temperature because the temperature of the air drops. So it's very, very important when we're designing servo mechanisms and servo control systems that we take into account these two different parts of the feedback loop. If this was a water-cooled system, this would be water that it's in. But, you know, in our case, it's air. And as I mentioned last module with the uh, central heating, the thermostat will click on and off because the air temperature changes. The air temperature changes because the radiators come on and off. The radiators come on and off because the boiler fires or doesn't fire. The boiler fires or doesn't fire because the thermostat clicks on and off. And we have a loop. What happens if we disconnect part of that loop? The frozen system. The system that doesn't work properly. It become unstable. It might. It exactly. It will go either one way or the other completely because it doesn't know when to stop. 
and uh, some of you have talked about examples where you see people running these patterns of behavior or these programs over and over again almost as if they don't know when to stop because there's an open feedback loop open feedback. yeah that's what we call it a, a, an open feedback loop in a servo system and the problem is without feedback the system cannot self-correct and if the system cannot self-correct it will carry on either sitting there doing nothing or trying to activate whichever way it's set up what means that you just repeat and go over and go over and go over? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because it can't Doing achieve that. the target state. Whatever it does, it can't achieve the target state. Or if it did, it wouldn't know that it had. So if this sensor broke, has anybody ever had their central heating break down because the thermo sense, temperature sensor in the boiler broke? The, uh, the, there's a little temperature sensor that goes into the gas burner that lets the boiler know that the gas is, is ignited, is burning. Because if the gas doesn't ignite, what do you need the boiler to do? Turn the gas off, otherwise you'll just have a load of gas in the utility room. That's not good. So we have a little therm called a thermocouple. It sits in the flame. Because it's in the flame, it gets hot. Because it gets hot, it gets damaged. Because it gets damaged, they wear out every few years. So your boiler doesn't come on, and you call the engineer, and it's a two-minute job to pop a new thermocouple in for which you'll charge you 150 quid or whatever, but it's a, you know, you can get one off eBay and it's a two minute job to fit it. So, the thermo, so the boiler isn't just one servo system, there are many. There's the one that's checking the temperature of the house, there's one that's checking that the, that the gas is lit, there's another one that's checking that the gas is flowing, there's no point doing anything else if the gas supply has been cut off, there's one checking the temperature of the water, as in the um, you know the hot water that it's output, outputting if it's a combination boiler. So all these are different um, servo mechanisms that are all stacked together and one will affect the operation of the other. So um, we want the, th the central heating, the, 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 you know, the radiators, we want that to operate independently of hot water. So you turn your tap on, you get hot water, that's what you expect and you expect that to happen whether or not the radiators are on, is that correct? Um, whereas if the boiler doesn't light, we want that to affect all the systems because if the gas doesn't light, that's dangerous um, and therefore it could be a fault in the system or whatever um, that would be dangerous if we had a load of gas building up. So, we have a number of uh, servo <coughs> mechanisms interacting with each other it'll switch off, uh, interacting with each other um, to, um, to th th that can also affect each other. So for example, do any of you live in a house where if you're having a shower and somebody turns on the tap in the kitchen, the shower goes cold? Yeah. Yes. So we have systems are not independent of each other. So we turn on one system and it affects the output of another. We don't want that to happen, a well-designed system wouldn't do that, but real-life systems do do that. Can you think of any other real-life systems where one thing will affect another unintentionally? Family? Family systems, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've actually got a scenario where my daughter had problems at school. Um, she's made some mistakes in, in terms of what she's looking at viewing. And what's happened is it's, it's caused us to lock down the entire net, net connection in the whole house. It's all locked down tight, very tightly controlled. And now my 16 year old, my 17 year old is complaining because he's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a good kid. I'm doing all the right things. And I'm being punished for something that my, my sister's done. And that's not cool. So we're having actually, something happening over here is now affecting Happening over here. Mm. Uh, and you'll you'll see this in pubs where you know a family are in a you know one of these family pubs, hungry horse kind of bouncy castle kind of places, and uh, one kid will start kicking off, and then all the others will start kicking off as well. And so, you know, one part of the system isn't isolated because because we're connected through a communication mechanism. If we've got another fan somewhere else in this robot cooling another part of the robot then the airflow will affect this one. So if the, you know, another fan fails, 
it's going to increase the temperature here. This fan's going to work harder. So it's very, it must be very hard to like have people have breakthroughs and changes. If they're in so like one of the clients I had, she was operating a certain way in the gym that was affecting her performance. So she worked well in a gym where she didn't know anyone, but she she wasn't able to perform in the gym where she knew people. And so she was running patterns around this because of the social context. But if you change that, there's also there's there's gains for how she's running in that situation, but she's not getting the performance. But if you change how she's she's operating in that situation, that's that's gonna not be beneficial. So why would she change? Like there's there's like she wants performance but she doesn't want to lose the social situation. So like and how would you ever get anybody to change if there's always these systems that come in that are operating that collide? Well, that's, a, that's a, a nice example. So if somebody's going to a gym, and if they know people in the gym, their performance is lower than if they don't know people. So okay. something is happening in that social interaction with people she knows. As she she gets a certain reassurance. She gets like she goes to certain people. Or like after she doesn't do very well, there's certain reactions that happen in her communication system that she, which I challenged her, said that she probably enjoys, but she hasn't had elsewhere and she's got this fear of being isolated and feeling being left out coming back from when she was in the teenage and all these things but like how like it's suiting her because she's getting something that she she's always wanted it from a young age like but she's it's not suiting her because she doesn't get her performance so like like there's i don't i wouldn't know i actually got stuck with this one i didn't really know what to do from that mm. i was like i worked out what it was and i was like I don't know what to say. I'm just a little bit stuck in the content. Working, working out what it is, where to tap, that's the most important step. So that's that, that's very good and a, and a great example. Does anybody ever go temping bowling or has ever been temping bowling? What do you do when you get a strike? Yes. Would you do that if you were doing it by yourself? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I probably, I'll probably have that in the, the company. Yeah. <laughs> Or if you kind of, kind of caught somebody's eye in the next lane, you'd probably go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like me and that builder at uh, Wix. <laughs> so, <laughs> came out of Wix with uh, a load of uh, big pieces of wood to, to make the floor in here. And uh, I was putting it on the roof of the car and so on. This, this guy, he looked like a builder, came out. And he got this sort of flatbed truck and he was putting some... He had a load of garden waste in the back of it and he was putting some stuff in like fence posts or whatever. He just sort of caught each other's eye and it's like, <laughs> like that's like, so yeah. <laughs> we're proper, we're proper DIY stroke semi-professional builders. We're not like those lightweights that get a home base and buy a picture hanging kit. <laughs> we're real men. We're real men. <laughs> yeah. And we made that little unspoken connection in that moment. That's so where it was, it was a caveman moment. It's like another caveman acknowledging another caveman saying. <laughs> Check out my fence post. It's human beings, we all operate inside the system. And if anybody, particularly family systems, if anybody in that system changes, they typically experience feedback, pressure. Definitely, because they, they're, they're outputting something into that. To operate in a certain way, and even if you operate in a way that's more healthy, if that's different, people get upset that they don't like it. Yeah. Definitely, and this is one of the biggest issues at practitioner level, is trainers not teaching the issue that you've picked up on about context. So we do some work with somebody, they will go back to their ordinary world, and their ordinary world will exert this passive pressure on them to change back, and to be the way that they were, the way that they are expected to be, the way that everyone else is comfortable around. There was a brilliant example of that from me yesterday in the supermarket. One of my lessons, they're playing a beach. Now, I remember going to the social board championships and then everybody was just bouncing, but I wanted to bounce up and down. It's like, well, I know it's going to happen for anybody, but it's come back to And down one aisle, there was a, a, a girl, she was probably about 10 or 12 or something, 10 perhaps. And she was like, bounce that and down. I was like, ah, great. And she told me, she called my eyes, she needed to stop. And I thought, how sad that is. She's been, she's somehow picked up some programming that you don't bounce up and down as her joy in front of other people. There. And she turned around, and I just waited, and in about five, 10 seconds, she turned around again, and I went, and then she started again. <laughs> and I just I thought it was important to give her the message, it's okay to be happy, it's okay to express joy and happiness. I don't worry about something going to express happiness. So there was that, I thought it was important to give her a different message. Mm -hmm. I just well, that's, that's really good. And I was proud of myself. And okay. it's very subtle. We have to do very, very little to, yeah. to, to touch people's lives. Very little. Okay. I would, I, would I would love for you to finish that next bit. Which bit? It sounds like you're getting somewhere, which is the... the <laughs> 
I'm talking about back in the space yeah, for him. Yeah, man. So you're filling in the space for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we're saying is that it's just, uh, so it's one of the challenges that we tend to have in, in, uh, in teams. You come along, you go into a team, the team you fix the team. So I work with the team, and the team performance will triple. So I'm, while I'm there, I'm sort of built. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of generating. Um, expectations, view, belief, I'm a coach, I'm like, this is how it's going to be. And the guys go, got it. So they do the right things, because I'm there. As soon as they disappear, the outside pressure from the organisation comes back in, exerts that pressure back. So it sounds like, you know the thing about making the change quick enough, so it permanently changes. So you were talking a bit about that and saying, that happens, meaning the change happens, you go away, the NLP training goes away, whatever person comes back into the context, the, the real world intrudes back in and forces them back into So how do you, what do you do to inoculate against that? Tell them. Tell them. Tell them what? Inoculate what? Tell, tell them what, sorry? Tell them how you're changed. Uh, uh, how are you changing? What are you going to do? Put a big photo of yourself in the wall so they understand. Tell them, tell them what? Tell if, you, if you've gone through and you've changed the way that you're doing things, if you don't tell people that it's what you're now doing, what how can like they it? know? So let's, I don't know, give up an example. So I decided um, in my household that I'm not going to do um, any of the washing anymore because, of, you know, because I'm focusing on, on my own thing. You're not the house slave. Yeah, I don't know, I'll do my things. And, um, but I haven't told anybody. So they just then assume I'm that I'm going to do the washing. And then it piles up and they all get frustrated and they mm. all get frustrated. Do they get frustrated or do you get frustrated? At two levels. But that, but that doesn't remove the pressure that's there though, because that pressure still might be there. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you a, a common example. People go on a time management course <laughs> at work. Judge, what? Do you want to even ask the question? So what did he ask? The question was, the question was, do you have any problems from as well? Kind of. What's that? So, I'm just going to try and recreate the issue that I think you got it, but maybe I just remember I haven't been clear. What I'm saying is, is that you make a change on someone, and while they're with you, they remain changed. However, when they go back into a big bad world, the world is still operating in a particular manner, in the same way that you, that person was before the change was made. So what happens is. They re exert the system, the system re exerts that pressure back on the person, and the person reverts back to how they were. Yes, and it's, and it's not even that simple. In the situation you're describing, you've also got to look at the system that you've created mm -hmm. for the duration that you're there, which is why have they changed for you and not for themselves? Because if they're changing for you, to impress you because they think you're going to report back to their boss, whatever, they will show you what they think you need to see. Because you can't, you can't make change on them. It's that you can facilitate change in them, but you can't make it unless you physically write something on them. I don't understand that last. You think about the change that they've made for you. So if you've made a change in the system, if you've changed, think about the change that they've made for you in yeah. uh, th Imagine that you've got a client for personal training and they show up really weak every week and they're really diligent and, and you know they do everything you ask them to do and they say look 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 what, I'm d look what I can do, look what I've been doing, look what I've been working on and so on and you think oh, it's great but I don't need convincing it's for you and there's a sense in which they are doing it for you to please you, to impress you, to win your approval and so on without you in that system they won't carry on doing it they're still really, so for instance if they if they have a pattern oh there's a guy at the moment there's a guy the person I was working with who was compared himself to rules from his parents uh, the band validation so it means the coach always done always bad thing and he's looked for approval yeah on certain things so if I want to do something I get fit if I'm doing that wholly for myself, I will do that whether or not anyone else is interacting with me. But if I'm doing it for you to impress you or win your approval as my personal trainer, I will only engage in behaviours well, that help me when I'm going to get approval from you. Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to get the women on my course to realise is that they, they already have that, that in them. Just if, if they want to change, they already have that to do that with themselves. It's an obstacle. But they don't really want to. <laughs> Sorry, but I have to feel value. 
if well, you internally feel value in getting fit and you um, get the benefits, then you don't need the external. It's really like an evaluation, isn't it? It's, 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 it's all all the benefit, yeah, yeah, that's oh, that sounds like a judgment. Yeah, may or may not be. Okay. You're, you're washing, you're your dishwashing okay. example. She's got it all. Right, so the reason I ask you a question about like who gets more if if the children, for example, don't the, the kids don't care that you tell them you're not going to be washing. My children don't care that mum's not going to be washing them. No. No. Yeah. You do. You do. Yeah. So you They don't care about wearing wearing dirty clothes, yeah, right? Yeah, you're right. My my yeah. mum says no, no, this is my mum does exactly the same thing. She's <laughs> you'll say, right, well, when we're doing it, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So the system is re-exerting back on her. And I'm saying, and what, what, then what happens is she goes, I can't deal with this anymore. House splits, the washing gets happened, this, that, the third, the whole thing's going on. Yeah, it's come through everywhere. My like, children getting shouted out, and I'm like, oh, I thought we agreed. I thought we agreed this and this and this. Like, and she's like, no, I can't deal with it. And I'm like, honey, if you carry on doing that, you're going to, you will continue being the person you said you don't want to be. Right? What we have to do is, we have to let this function happen, and then we have to bring the family back together and go, right, how are we going to deal with this? And then I'll confuse Well, but that, that's because I'm there, so that's how we make change, because I'm aware of this stuff. But when I, when my team's on... But you're not visualising at your house now. <laughs> you and your wife in the, in the lab have been able to use the You're doing training with like, right, it's more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're drawing. You're drawing like... Yeah, you're around the world. Like, so, so, right, here's the goal, here's your response. Your response. <laughs> I'm imagining his wife doing Kung Fu and him having to talk her down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this is hardcore, man. She's awesome. The thing is, though, right, because we do have an A-board. Do you? Oh, my God. We do have an A-board. We don't... Actually, she's like, got a big whiteboard in the kitchen. You can visualise what it's into one. The thing is, this is that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, teach you, I'll teach you agile skills, I'm telling you now. Your children, your children will run, your, your children will, will do, will, will work, and the, the ones that work the fastest, the ones that work the best, the, the youngest. The youngest like, if we do this, this, and this, we get to play, we've been playing Monopoly for six weeks. Do you know why? Because the work is visualised, they get it done, they help each other, they get the job done and they get to choose what they want to do. So, but Monopoly is like a six hour game. Right, I'm totally cool with that. Because my missus like, I can't deal with Monopoly again. <laughs> like, yeah, can you, have you noticed the kids are doing all their work? The youngest are doing all their homework. They're, everything's done. I'm like, yeah. The ones that don't like it are too old these kids. So that's working well. It's, it's amazing what happens when you visualize work. The point is this, forget all that shit. The point is, how do you... I, I can help. How do you do it? How do you make the change stick? Yes, exactly. Yeah, when you're not there. Yes, when you're not there, how do you make the change stick? To come back to your point quickly about um, doing the washing, and it, it's not them that want the clothes clean. Yeah. And therefore, from their point of view, the the underlying message is: Well, you want the clean, you want the clothes clean, you wash them. Exactly. And that makes sense. Yeah, no, I understand that. <laughs> I, I get that. Uh, yeah. That's then sure. entirely plausible. Dude, you must have been spent. No, 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 I still wash them, but I was still like find ways to go home to get my mum to do it. Yeah. We were debating the other night the, the 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 potential of disposable clothes actually. Yeah. 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 When you think of all the damage to the environment that you're doing by washing stuff, you know, is there a way that we could actually be be Fine. more in yeah. Yeah, you, exactly, you, biodegradable. You know did she, what did you say just a minute ago about, about uni, so about clothes? You, you would find ways to... Go home to get my mum to wash them. Get your mum to wash them. So, I uh, still so do it occasionally. Yeah, so put it all in the car and take So Abby's part of a system. You're part of a system, you're fighting back, see? A system within which your mum feels good. Yeah, no, she loves it. Like, doing the washing. Like, if I was there... Because she feels like she's taking care yeah. of you. And she likes when I come home, she's like, oh, Abby, I miss you. Come here and like, oh, what meal do you want? Like, like I get the trigger there, it's great. So why I wouldn't I? I like it. <laughs> my, my own is when I, <laughs> when I bought my first house, when I was about 23, I bought uh, a microwave, I bought a washing machine, and my mum said to me when I moved out, she said, oh, you're going to be back every week to get, get me to do your washing for you. I said, no, I'm not. And I never did. <laughs> I, think she was, I think she'd have moaned about it, but she probably wanted me to. Mm -hmm. To, you know, to so still feel like she was had a purpose. So see how your mum wants to wash your clothes, right, and give you your food. You know, my mum wants to, my mum's diabetic. And the way she, she shows love is she brings loads of sweets and this and that and third, right, which is for the children. We know that it's really bad for the kids. So we're like, mum, and there's a, there's a systemic problem. So the problem is the system. The system is the kids realise that sugar's bad for them. 
my mom knows that she wants to express love to the kids. She goes, I'll buy all these sweets and give them, the, and the kids love me and they hug me, and it's, which is what they do, right? And so my mom's gay. You see how the system's fighting back. We, what we have to do is we have to find ways to, when the change happens with the children, it's localized change. We need to find, make the change systemic. We need to find a way to make it stick. Right, so where do we make the change in order to, it, where, where do we make the change? It helps if you warn people. So well, warm people, yeah. What happens to mate of mine is he goes to the cabin in the morning to get a shirt for work and there's no shirts. He turns to his wife and says, you know, why am I going to clean shirts? And she said, the washing fairy's pissed off. Not doing washing anymore. She'd given him a week's notice so he could have done some washing, but yeah, the money money he's like, how the fuck am I going to get to work? Ah, well, but, but she wouldn't feel valued then. We only value something when it's in short supply. Well, that's how I used to not lose the boyfriend. If I want to lose the boyfriend, I just throw away the che their shirts from the laundry. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the shirts? Because I'm not the laundry girl. Is there an easier way to lose people? Can I? I can't put you an example from my life. Because I, I kind of get this, but it's happening at most. Well, I think it's happening because I've started my own business. But my, I think my dad wanted me to do physio, which is why I did physio in the first instance. So I thought my parents wanted me to do like an unstable career path. Now I'm doing my own business. Definitely there's changes in our relationship. My mum's okay, but my dad and me, like, I just don't talk to him anymore. So like, I feel like there's this pressure that I probably should have just gone into a career and followed like a path. Because he's been a GP all his life. He's been in the same job for the last 35 years. And that's what he knows. But like, there's definitely this tension. I'm, I'm like, well, there's that pressure there that I'm not doing. But if you validate him, so, and thanks very much for teaching, for getting, uh, in encouraging me to do the physio, because physio wouldn't have been no, physio. Right. <laughs> but no, but actually, I said to him recently, I said like I really value you guys as parents, and for the first time in a long time, I heard that him like almost like get emotional about it because he, but he, what I heard in that was that he doesn't think he's a very good parent, like the way he responded. I don't know why um, or whatever, but that's when I kind of validated him for being like, thank you, you've been so supportive and things. I heard it in his response, but like, like that, I, I wasn't expecting that response. It's almost not what I think. But so I don't know whether he thinks that he's. You see, if there's a system, isn't there? Mm -hmm. I don't think really he's a good personal trainer if he didn't have a physio background. Well, the thing is, when I wanted to do personal training before yeah. physio, he said, he told me things like phys uh, personal trainers work unsociable hours, like it's really hard work to break into that industry. He told me all these things. I really didn't have any experience in the industry, but me and listening to my dad was like, oh, okay, I'm also going to a good idea. Yeah, but now just you have uh, Hang on, just as an ex Hold on. Hold on, we're getting into content. Just as an experiment, so everyone's a parent here apart from Abby and Adrian, is that right? To the best of your knowledge at least? So, um... <laughs> so, uh, I, I think Abby would know. I think Abby would probably know, yeah. 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 Uh, are you a good parent? Me? Fucking amazing parent. I'm an awesome parent. I'm telling you now. Are you, are you a good parent? Yeah. Uh, are you a good parent? I would like to think so. Are you a good parent? I've got as good a parent as I'd like. Are you a good parent? Yes. Are you a good parent? No, I'm probably a little bit on that one. Not as good as I would like to. Yeah, I'll try my best, is what I would say. Mm -hmm. You know. You sticking by your yeah, I'm awesome confident, parent. awesome parent? Okay. What do you think about children and say for you? I've asked them. I've asked them. Yes, yes. Do they have to fill out a satisfaction <laughs> survey every week? In fact, they, they say they come back to me. Oh my we, God. We, we, have, we, have, we have chats and stuff, just, just talk about things. Um, and they will just say, you know what, Papa? Or they'll say, Mama, you, we realise when we hang around our, our, par our kids at school and we, hear, we see how their parents treat them, we come back and we realise you guys are amazing. So that's quite Can we have a tour on your files for me? <laughs> <laughs> so to come back to your question. If Peter asked you, you're a perfect parent. Yeah. And the answer would be no, I'm yeah. not. So you can tour my household, but you will find in my household things that you find in your household. We're not perfect, but we are great parents. Excellent. So to come back to your question. That's really arrogant, isn't it? So sorry. No. <laughs> to, to come back to your uh, to your question, if we know that the environment is going to create this passive pressure that will resist 
a person's attempts to make changes, where do we make the change? Well, ideally in the organisation, in the environment. In the environment, yes, exactly. But how do we do that? Because <laughs> because it, it, environment is is two things. It's it's place and it's people. So we could change place, and we see this in life makeover programs, don't we? Gordon Ramsay will follow the familiar pattern. We'll go to a restaurant, uh, tell them their food's dreadful, argue with the owner. Um, beat the owner down by showing him, uh, you know, uh, hard evidence that his uh, customers hate the food. Then he'll create a new menu, then he'll, you know, get all the staff on board, uh, and then they will redecorate the restaurant. So they don't redecorate the restaurant, that's not the first thing they do, they do that when the owner has accepted the, the possibility for change. Yes. And by changing the physical environment, they then walk in and they're like shocked and amazed, oh it's so fantastic and, and they'll say the same things if you ever watch the programme. It's, it's, it's just the same script every week with just different, different people, different restaurants. But the script is basically, oh we've always hated those, that, those drab colours or those dark windows or those dark tables or those whatever, 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 but we couldn't change it for X reason, Y reason, whatever. And, oh, it's a breath of fresh air, or it's so bright, or it's so nice, or it's so whatever. <coughs> um, and so it, that becomes a physical symbol of change. So we can change the physical place, the environment. You do that when you put post-it notes on the walls yeah. with these questions on you changing the physical environment. We know that human beings are going to be reactive to the environment. We know that if we change the environment, we know that the reaction will change. As, as long as they're aware of that change. People. How do we get people to change? This is the thing, going on that point, schools, so schools that are underperforming, they often go in, they get rebuilt, so everything looks different. Same staff, same students come in, within six months it's the same situation. It's the same, because we've not taken care of both parts of the system. Yeah. So. An example from time management training. Somebody goes on time management training because they're stressed, they're overworked, they're not getting things done, and so on and so forth. So they go on time management course. They learn all these great skills, all these great little tools and tips and mnemonics and techniques and all these little things for setting time aside and planning and prioritizing how to write a to-do list and all this stuff. They come back to work. Within half an hour of them being back the next morning, they're right back to the way things were and all those great tools and tips that they thought, oh, I'll look for a time to use that, I'll find a time to use that, I'll find a time to do that, is all gone and forgotten. Because they haven't done the single most important thing of all, which is that if they do this one single most important thing, they will work out their own tips and routines. To, to do list, really. Okay, there might be, we might make little mistakes like not putting everything on it. So the stuff rattling around in your head and it's not written down and therefore it acts as a distraction or whatever. But for the most part, if you were to go to your colleagues and say, I'm going on a time management course tomorrow. When I come back, I'm going to be doing a few things differently. And this is going to help me to be less stressed and it's going to help you because I'm going to be more productive for you. And I want you to help me by pointing out times when I'm getting stressed or pointing out times when I'm getting overloaded or or think about things from my point of view if I say no that I can't do something will you help me and they will either say yes or no, yes or no. so one of the most important things that a person does when they're going through a process of change is they tell the people in the system around them to help them I'm going to make some changes and I want you to help me. Will you do that? You give them an alternative as well to create value in a different way. Yeah, exactly. So what happens if you say no? Then you know where you stand. Hmm. Hi. There is a, an example uh, sometimes when um, in the past you think, right, I'm going to lose a load of weight, I'm going to get healthy. And you tell everybody. And then a bit later on you have to kind of when people say, how's it going, and sort of change the subject, because it doesn't work out. There's a difference between telling people you're going to do it and asking for their help. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going, to, I'm going to fit into a size 3 bikini when I go on holiday, I don't know if they come in size 3, I don't know. You get into a size 3 bikini? Uh, once. A mankini? Yeah, took a few beers, but you know. So it's, uh, so it's stuff like, 
at the end of like within a training, if there's someone working with somebody, is it worth them like, like an accountability partner, someone to hold them accountable to them when they go back to the workplace? Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Sometimes when I did the breakthrough goal and I did the training, we did a key to achievable outcomes, and I got everybody then to yeah, and to ask a question, I mean, there was a question on your pre-course questionnaires that will, what are, what are you going to learn or something, or what do you want to get out of it, and what can the other people on the course help you do to help you get it? Otherwise, you go on the training course thinking it's me, and there's all these other people there, but I don't really care about them. It's me, and I'm going to take stuff from the trainer. They're going to teach me stuff, and there's some other people. You know, necessarily bear in mind that all these other people are going to help you to learn as well, because they're going to share examples, you're going to be working with them in pairs and so on. So if you think about how they can help you, you're more likely to get what you want, because now you've got eight people, no, sorry, seven people training you instead of one. Got you, yeah. And then what it does is it, it opens their minds to when people share that actually that could help them with their outcome rather than just saying the trainer is the only one that can handle with that and, and Correct. delete everybody else. What it does then Takes the pressure off you as the trainer, they yeah. will talk to each other at break time, they will help each other out. Yeah, and they're not, I, you know, I, I, I noticed this with, with practitioner training that, you know, lunchtime and break time, I had no time to myself because I'd have a queue of people go, oh, can you help me with this, can you help me with that? And, you know, and then I realised, you know, they, they, they were perfectly capable of helping each other, but they weren't because that's the dynamic that, that, the, the, you know, that they expected. So recognising that that's in the system, that's a dynamic that's been set up by other training courses that they've been on. And therefore, they will they will continue that here, like you saying. You're expecting this to be more formulaic, mm -hmm. and actually, this is very formulaic, but at a different level, a different, a different type. type of formula. Mm -hmm. It's not follow the script and you'll get this result. It it's. I think it, it, they did a lot. Here you go. Here's my trick. Yeah, and how, how am I supposed to replicate that? So what we need to we need to to do two things. We need to affect change within the system of the person, but we also need to bear in mind the system that they are part of, that they are within, and that system comprises inanimate physical components. So, for example, um, years ago there was some uh, there was a, a some research or some work that was done around depression, and they found that getting people into the countryside was as effective as some depression medications in some cases. Um, and changing the physical environment, you know, and, and, and like you said about changing your, your physiology and noticing when you, you're getting taller again because you're kind of standing up straight rather than stooping down and so on. Um, so we know that the physical environment does affect people. Um, but more, at a more basic level than that, we are reacting to the physical environment all the time because there are other people in that environment and animals and all sorts of things going on. Um, but if we change that physical environment at the right moment, so for example, at particular points in a management training program, people would write stuff out and they'd pin it on their desks as a little reminder, or write a little word out and stick it on their monitor as a little reminder, or write, or bring in a symbol, a toy, a picture, a, a something. We could call these anchors, we could say, oh, some, all that is is somebody's putting an anchor on their desk. Well, yeah, but that in itself, it's not just the fact that it's an anchor for a positive state, picture of your kids or whatever. It's the fact that something has changed in the environment and that change signals, therefore, the presence of change. Being aware of change, as you, uh, as you said, Rob, about being aware of, of what confusion meant or being aware of the environment, the context around you, um, reorients you to that external environment. And then you make sense of it differently, and then you react differently, and that different reaction then in turn changes the environment. Um, and I'm sure there are times when all of you have just suddenly had the urge to tidy your desk or tidy something or make a plan. So, you know, a few days back I found I was getting a bit stressed and I was feeling a bit overwhelmed and there was, uh, I'd, I'd noticed I'd couple, bu double booked a couple of things in my diary, which is a sure sign for me that I've just got too much on and I'm not taking time to stop and plan. 
so I printed out a calendar from last week right up until the 31st of December and wrote in everything that I'm doing and everywhere I'm going on that calendar and it's pretty full but what that allows me to do is see where the gaps are and, and that means I've got time to plan in those gaps and so on so I feel much more sort of relaxed and back in control again now um, so that's a change in the environment it's something you could walk into my office and you could see that plan you could see that diary and I can see it. it's a reminder when I walk in it's right in front of me um, to to take a bit of time out to to plan and you know write things on a to-do list rather than reacting and going straight into them stuff like that so we know that when a person makes a change they will spontaneously change their environment but that often won't go far enough to support that process and what we've got to encourage them to do is get help from the people around them friends family colleagues so instead of saying i'm going to diet i'm going to be a size whatever i'm going to look great for my next holiday it's saying i'm going to do this diet and i want you to help me by what so let's say you worked in an office don't bring junk food yeah don't bring don't bring junk food people do I mean, nervously they bring the cakes in and just say we'll just try and stop you know you can't stop people from doing that yeah. in an office environment so you've got to sort of people, don't let me have one or something like that. Yeah, don't buy one for me. Mm. Don't let me have one. Bring me an apple instead. Yeah. Okay, give me an alternative. Because people, uh, that's a good uh, example because uh, there's research on the social situations. If you're around with these people, you're more likely to be obese. Or like, so actually, what you're saying is you actually just provide them an alternative as well. Yeah. Because, mm, I don't know, I think, I think it's quite hard for people to, to change their respect in diets and I don't know, I find that it's hard. It, 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 it can be. If we mm. change, the system around us cannot help but change because we're different, the system has If to the system notices. Well, that, but that's actually the, the, where you, the opposite. The pitfalls are mm. when people say, oh, just this one, so, oh, yeah. oh, for goodness sake, just have it. Yeah, and and if we really feel awful. that social pressure, yeah, if we don't see, you can you see that I'm on a diet? Is there anything that I'm doing right now that suggests to you that I'm on a diet or I'm studying a course, for a CIPD course, or I am planning a holiday? Is there anything that you can see that suggests that to you? So how would you see me acting? You don't come and look at what I have for lunch. So how can you see that I'm on a diet? So how do you know to help me? Yeah. Because the visible... Some might do something that's cut off your cream cake. You say, no thanks, I'm not eating cream cake. And that's the problem. I've got to wait till that happens. Yeah. And then I've got to be in control of the trigger. This is what uh, they do in... Um, so that's my point about it. If I change the environment, the system around me cannot help but change. Y yes. What, what's that thing like NLP? C uh, CBT, that's what they do in CBT a lot. It's about, you know, you wait for a trigger, wait for the spider to come in, and then try and react to it differently. It's too late. By the time they're in there with the cakes, you're already running the should I, shouldn't I program. You've already lost. And so we've got to get ahead of the system. If, if, some, if, if, you're, if you feel like denying cake is a struggle because actually you love cake because cake is nice <laughs> and one cake isn't going to hurt if you're going to get that in conversation with yourself as soon as somebody's got that cake in your face yeah. you've already lost yeah, you've, got you've got to, to preempt that when you you've got to get one step on, ahead you have the sugar and you have the regret you yeah <laughs> and then we have right i'm not going to eat anything for the rest of the week yeah <laughs> i'm going to be like an air plant for the, for the rest of the week yeah, yeah. i'm going to live off the moisture in the air <laughs> <laughs> and smelling other people's lunch. <laughs> you, you nailed it. I just want to emphasize that point. You know the thing about if you change, change the system. That's not true. I, I used to believe that too until I saw that other people are running their own systems. And when you're, when you, are, I've got, if you've got teams of eleven fighting against an entire organisation, five thousand, those guys aren't going to win. There's just no way. The, the, the force, the rest of the world, the rest of the organisation. And it, it's system thinking is, is that when you tend to when you make a change in the system, the system will fight back. Systems want to live, so they will they will immediately fight. Well, back. as we talked about last module. I'm talking about forcing. I'm saying uh, if I change the environment around me, it has to change. The that's isn't that. that. Yeah. No. no, it doesn't have no. to because that environment has people in it with free will. Yeah. Yes, but dieting is not an observable behaviour most of the time. Because if, if I bring in a load of cakes to the office and it's my birthday, 
I'm not going to sit and watch who takes a cake and who doesn't. So I don't know that you haven't taken a cake today when normally I would. So, so I don't know. I don't know who's taken a cake. Somebody's, somebody's had two. I don't know. I've brought in enough cakes for everybody. Possibly a few left over. I don't know. I don't know who's had a cake. And therefore, if you're on a diet and you have chosen not to take a cake, it, I, I, and I, you've I, exhibited that by not taking a cake, I can't see that. And, 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 yet, and yet, just, just to add to that, the, the thing is, when you give something to somebody and they accept it, it's gratifying for you. When you bring in food for your team and everyone takes the food, you feel good. So then, and just imagine the other, the opposite. You bring in food for your team, no one takes the food. You feel a bit shit. Mm -hmm. So what you, so generally, you're running. I find that the teams are running a pattern. People bring in a, a stack of donuts, and they're like, "Hey, have a donut." And what I'll do is, if I bring in donuts to the team and not everyone takes it, I'll go around offering donuts for the rest of the rest of the office, and I'll go around, "Hey, man, have a donut." Because I'm trying. To that's that's and what do you do if somebody yeah. says, "Oh no, I shouldn't"? Yeah, I'm like, "Ah." Oh. I'll go, oh, mate, have one. Go on, sorry, it's only one. Go on, it's only one donut. It's only one. Go See, on. so I'm running my own. Go on. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Try so it. So it's the last one, it's the last one, it's going to go. It's Try go. it, you'll like it. Go. You'll like it. So you've just proved my point. That person has changed, so you've had to change your behaviour to accommodate. What? Well, you've yes. Had to, you've had to run into the, you've had to start running the, oh, okay, how do you have one? It's not bad. You wouldn't have done that if they hadn't changed. That's I'm true. Running. Yes. So that's the point. That's, I'm, and if that I'm results in the person now having a donut, then it's that that adaptation of the system to their different response to to has not worked towards their goal of losing weight. I'm not saying goal. whether it works or whether it's helpful, but I'm saying yeah, yeah. if something changes, if everything around it else has to change. It, so, it. yes, that's true. Isn't that I'm not saying no, it's successful. That's true. Successful or but helpful. sometimes if people but will make a change on the inside, they will say, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no to my boss today, I'm not going to take on everything. And they will make that promise to themselves internally but unless that promise becomes behaviour, yes. it has no way of affecting other people. Yes. And so people will think to themselves, oh, I've got a great time management tip, I'm going to try and find a chance to use that today, and they never do, because the very first time that they realise they're in a time management pressure situation is when somebody's already standing over them saying, uh, I, need, I need this by, uh, by lunchtime, I'll just leave that with you, thanks very much. Right back to square one. Whereas they could have pre-framed it like a week before. It, yes, unless yeah, they... So it's like enforcing boundaries and sort of, sort of enforcing ways of working and expectations and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if this was an example that came so up like, on the last module. They put a little charity box on their tin with a sign on that says urgent requests, one pound. If you want me to do something right now and drop everything <laughs> to do it, it will cost you a pound to go to the air ambulance or whatever. And it's a signalling system. It's a way of letting people know something's changed, something's... Oh, what's that? Starts a conversation, yeah, because and, and oh, okay, and now I've the conversation's changed. I've preempted, I've preempted the likelihood that the system, that by the time I know that I have an opportunity to try out my new behaviour, I will already be down the road of the old behaviour. Isn't it slightly based on the fact that the person who's doing the change would be declared like, let's go back to diet, and I'm on a diet, and then. If they change then their behaviour and decide actually I'm not on a diet anymore, I think this is over time element. So I've had someone in my life who um, goes on diets, declares to everybody on a diet, and then they come off the diet as quick as they go on the diet. Yes. Um, the, so what? what and then, so when it, even when now they're looking for please help me, I'm on a diet <coughs> because we're all in the pattern. Yeah. So the servo mechanism is, 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 yeah. is putting the shoveling cakes behaviour on hold until the target weight is reached. As soon as that's reached, the system switches back into shoveling cakes mode. <laughs> or as soon as something else is reached, not necessarily a weight. It, as soon, or as soon as something else is achieved, whatever the actual intention of the diet was. Because if she goes on a diet very quickly, may not necessarily be achieving a weight, she may just be going on a diet for a reason to... Yeah, so let's say going on diet for a holiday. Yeah. That's a good example. So the holiday generally is going to be a fixed date. The diet is going to be... Urgent, more urgent. Yeah. It's going to feel more urgent the closer you get to that holiday date. But this is the same issue as, as Emma and the people bringing up the real issue five minutes before the end of the, of the conversation. So he, this, this is today, here's going on holiday. You've set yourself a plan, which is I'm going to lose so much weight. I'm going to look, you know, be able to fit in my bikini. I'm going to look good on holiday. Blah blah blah. 
off you go and you start modifying your behavior so oh no I'm not gonna have a cake I'm on a diet I'm gonna be good today whereas somebody once said to me I'm gonna stay on the straight and narrow which is an interesting uh, ambiguity to be straight and narrow mm -hmm. to look straight and narrow as well as to be on the straight and narrow and straight and narrow implies Constraints, constraints. Yeah, uh, authority. being constrained, enforced, anyway. So, starts off the diet and day by day modifying behavior uh, in pursuit of this goal. Let's say I'm now here and I've, I'm nowhere near the target weight I wanted to be. What do I do? Do I postpone the holiday? Crash diet. So, crash diet. Or give up. Uh, or yeah. give up. They are sod it. Yeah. I'm only going to stuff myself on holiday anyway. So the point is, the holiday is not going to move. You what, sorry? The holiday is not going to move. So the diet behaviour modification is variable. The holiday date is fixed. And so a person will, in the short term, engage in, oh, well, I'll start the diet tomorrow. Or uh, I'll, just, I'll just have a light dinner. Or I'll have a cake lunch. Or well, I'll just I'll just skip breakfast, you know. And they'll do. I'll just walk up the stairs and so they'll do all of these things. I I'll, I'll st I briefly joined a gym many years ago. It was a terrible mistake. Um, and they had these uh, the the you have these little personal key fob things that you put in the machines, and that would track how much you know energy you're expending. And at the end, you put it in this machine, and it would show you how many calories and so on and so forth. And you could also get it to show you based on today's workout or today's routine and your total time that you'd spent at the gym, how far you'd gone around the London Marathon and how far you'd gone around the Tour de France. Yes, and after like weeks of going there a couple of times a week, I'd gone about 100 yards at the Tour de France <laughs> and I was uh, about a <laughs> quarter of a mile into the London Marathon, at which point I thought, fuck this, it's a complete waste of time. <laughs> and when I look at the number of calories on a Kit Kat, it's like I've spent all this time doing all this pedaling and stuff. I haven't even expended a Kit Kat, it would be easier just not to eat the Kit Kat. That would be easier. <laughs> so it did change my behaviour. Yeah, and it, yeah, exactly. Uh, and people say, oh, I find it, but it's so easy to eat junk food. How easy is it? You've got to earn money, you've got to go to the supermarket, you've got to buy junk food, you've got to bring it home, you've got to go put it in the cupboard, you've got to go into the kitchen, you've got to get it out, you've got to eat it. Versus not doing any of that, <laughs> which one is easier? Clearly not doing that is easier. But the system, the, oh, well, the kids, and, oh, well, you know, you've got to have a treat, and, and all these other parts of the complex servo mechanism that are exerting this internal and external pressure makes it, as you say, easier actually to carry on in that route. You're in the supermarket anyway buying apples and tofu, I may as well have a Kit Kat or I'll treat myself or well, I've been good today. And, oh, so yeah. it's not, that's really interesting, so it's the other systems that are exerting just as much as the immune system as well, like in the diet, so it's like yeah. the diet because I, what I've been saying to the ladies is that it's easy, it's comfortable for them to stay where they are. Yeah. But actually, on a surface, on the like, on one level, it's actually not because they have to do all these things. It's all the other. They have to expend do. time and effort to maintain where they are. They do, yeah. And therefore, you're not balancing then, do this exercise well. against do nothing. You're saying you're balancing do this exercise against doing all the things that you're doing currently. Just from a systemic perspective, I think. You know, you said, um, this is something about obese people hanging on with obese people. So, what did you say about that? You said um, in this research says if you, if you stay around overweight people, obese people, you're more yeah. have a higher chance of being overweight. Because yeah, yeah. what system are they building? It's normal, they fit in. What's the system they're in? Well, it's a cultural system. It's a cultural system of, of what? <laughs> it's it's community support. If you're, if you're around fat people, right, you're munching all the time. You're going, you're going around, if I'm around, when I'm around my, 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 Crisps, chips, this, that, that. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I start to because that system is pushing onto me, right? When I switch, when I, when I, one of the things that helped me, I'm not, not completely there yet, but when I hang, hang around my fit friends, they're like, they don't even eat. But we're the thing fasting is, is all the time, we're training all the time, 
and, to, and now it's easier for me to go with the flow because the system is making it easier for me to kind of stay fit. But yeah. that's, that's an interesting one for me personally. Like, I could be super lean, like a lot leaner, but I don't want to be because I'm in a system where I enjoy eating out and I enjoy eating a certain amount of food, but I have a balance. But actually, in my head, I like, I can't, I don't want to skip out on all the social things because I don't, because I like them, but I also kind of want to lose a couple of pounds. Like, so there is a, there's always this balance, but then how do you have the two together? Like, can you have the two together? Would you, would you have to change the system? Like, do I have to stop saying like, no, I need to stop eating out all the time? Or can I change the system elsewhere so I can still eat out? I believe there are restaurants that serve things other than chips. I've heard this rumor. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point is, uh, going out to a restaurant has no practical relationship with how many calories you consume while you're there. It kind of does in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it does in your head, exactly right.